May the rich grace and abundant peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you and dwell with you now and always. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, there's a phrase that I've heard far too many times in my life, a phrase that it kind of gets old when I hear it one too many times, and it is the phrase, I told you so. Have any of you ever heard that phrase said to you, I told you so? Anybody? Raise your hand if you've ever had someone tell you, I told you so. You know, and it's not always that someone actually says those words, I told you so. But sometimes it's the look they get, the smile that creeps on their face, that it's just, I told you so, I told you again and again. And I have to be honest with you, more often than not, it's my wife who tells me, I told you so. And maybe it's not those words, I told you so, but it's almost always that look on her face, the, the smile or the kind of the laugh in her voice, and I'm not ashamed to admit that my wife makes me a better husband. My wife makes me a better man, and I think men, as uh, those of you who are married, can probably think about how your wife makes you a better husband and a better man. Now, I don't want to just praise wives today, which certainly we could spend an entire sermon praising our wives, praising the women in our lives, but I do want to talk about wives, excuse me, and mothers, uh, daughters, aunts, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, Today, as we celebrate the Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday today, we look at the way these women make our church better. The way that God has blessed our church with these, women, with these ministries that these women carry out. Now, all of you are, not all of you are members of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Some of us, we, we can't be. But some of us, we, all sh- we do all share the same ministry and mission. Whether or not we're part of the LWML, whether or not we can be part of the LWML, share in a common goal, in a common mission of sharing Christ with the nations. Now let me stop for just a moment before we keep going and let you know that this is not just a tip of the hat. That LWML Sunday is not just an obligatory, well, thank you LWML, you guys make a great cake for LWML Sunday, you help with Easter breakfast, you help us get rid of our extra clothes on rummage sale day, you fundraise from the seminaries, that's not what the LWML is about. If that's all it was, we wouldn't have a special Sunday service, and we wouldn't dedicate a a few moments of our time to the mission and ministry that God has given them and God gives to us. Because that mission and ministry that they share is the mission and ministry that each one of us in the church has, and that is to be salted for service to God, to be salted for service to share the good news. Now, what is Jesus talking about? Here's right at the end of our text today. He said, if salt has lost its saltiness, how will you make it salty again? It almost seems like a ridiculous question, doesn't it? Because salt is, by its nature, salty. Can you imagine unsalty salt? Not really, can you? Have any of you ever opened the can can of Morton's and dumped it on your food and said, boy, this is not salty salt? No, of course not. When we think about the salt that, that that, and we think about that taste, we always expect that saltiness to come. And that is the same truth for Christians, whether it is a man or a woman, whether it's someone who serves in the Lutheran Women's Missionary League or someone who serves on the streets, among people. Each and every one of us, just like salt cannot be unsalty, those of us who are followers of Christ, those of us who have Christ in our hearts, cannot be anything but Christian. We cannot help but be Christian people in the way that we live and the way that we act. And not just because of us, but because of Christ, what he did for us. 8,000 miles away, 2,000 years ago, he died on the cross. But that was not the end of it, was it? That was just the beginning. That was the claim that he laid on our lives. That in our baptism, he would wash us, cleanse us, make us whole. And he continues to walk in with us each day. He continues to face each day with us. He continues to give us the energy and the strength that we need to carry out his word in our lives. Now sometimes it seems a little overwhelming, doesn't it? It seems a little overwhelming to be Christians in the world today. We live in a time and a day and an age where it's not popular to be Christian. We live in a time where we hear more and more about all the trials in the Middle East and the explosions that are happening, quite literally the explosive tempers and angers. And we hear about the fact that people are becoming more and more anti-Christian and away from the church. And we don't even have to look too far. We don't even have to look too far from our own doors to to know that there is a lot going on in our own lives, our own struggles and trials that we face. But those are not what make us Christian. Those are not what drives drives us to be followers of Christ. Because our hope is not wrapped up in the things of this world. See, so often people will, and we hear hear about Jesus using this in his own parable in Matthew chapter 13. He talks about those who, who are sprinkled on the path with the seed. 
and that, that, that seed that doesn't implant in the ground. Some people, they join the faith because they're in a good place in their lives. Some people join the faith because it's the right thing to do where they're at at that time, but that's, that's not what being a Christian is about. That's not what the hope of being a Christian is. Because we as Christians, we are not that shallow, we are not that depthless, but we are full of Christ, filled up and made whole. We are not those who continue to long for sin, although sometimes it feels that way, that we keep falling into our same sins. But we are salted. We are salted to be in service to Christ. We are salted to not turn back to our old ways, to our old lives. All of you know the story. I think all of you know the story of, of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot and his family, they were blessed, weren't they? Even though they, that God was going to destroy all of Sodom and Gomorrah, they were, allowed to be, they were allowed to be saved. God spared their lives. And when they left, though, what happened? Lot's wife turned back. She turned to salt. That's not what I mean when I'm talking about being salted servants of Christ or being salted for service. When we talk about being salted for service, we're talking about once we not turning back, but going forward, going, pressing on despite the difficulties in our lives, pressing through those things and knowing that God is present with us, going through those things and knowing that God carries us through and knowing that it is not alone. But even in those trials, He brings His healing. He brings His strength. He gives us true hope. Now this flies in the face of the world, doesn't it? This flies in the face of, of everything that goes on today and even sometimes in the, historically in the church because it's about God coming to us. It's about God implanting Himself in our lives. See, when we come together on Sunday morning, when we come together to praise His name and honor Him, it's not about us, is it? It's not about us, but it's about Him. It's about Him coming to us. Him fellowshipping with us. God, our Heavenly Father, He comes down and He dwells among us. God, our Heavenly Father, He doesn't expect us to be salted for service without His support and strength. But He comes down in our worship, in those times when we hear the prayers, when those times when we hear His Holy Word read, as we, as we dine together on that Holy Supper and communion. He gives us the strength, the support that we need. He gives us healing that we need. And when we look at those, our, our role as salted Christians, it is not only to be flavor, flavored, but it is also to be people of God who bring peace. Did you notice how Jesus ended that today? As he, as he ended the text today, there was just one short line. Be at peace with one another. Be at peace with one another. What a high platitude to ask us in this world, but he doesn't expect us to do it on our own, but with his strength and support. And as we look at the LWML, as we look at the works that they do in the world today, we don't look at the, the works they do for themselves. They don't, we don't look at the works that they do as to, for God because all their works, though, bring honor to God but are for their neighbor. Think about that for a minute because a lot of times we get stirred up about hearing good works. We, we get a little uncomfortable hearing that phrase good works in our churches. But when we do those works of God, when we carry out those works for our neighbors, it is not to bring us greater glory before God, but it is to help our neighbor. As Martin Luther says, we are the Imagio Dei. We are the image of God to the people. We are God to people sharing his love and sharing his, me his message. And this brings us to the first, one of the first things that LWML does, and that is their witness to the world. That is their witness that they go out, not only to the, all the world, but even to their own communities. Think of the women in the Lutheran Women's Missionary League that you know. First and foremost, their mothers, their grandmothers. First and foremost, they, they have a job in their community, sharing their love. It makes me think for a moment, just a moment, of, of the woman at the well. There was a woman uh, in John chapter 4. This woman at the well, she was not what you would call popular. In fact, she was kind of ostracized and alienated by her community. She was driven out to the point that she had to go to get water on her own. She met Jesus at the well. She met Jesus and she was a woman who had numerous previous husbands. She was currently had a living boyfriend. She was not well liked in her community. But look at how Jesus approached her. Did he immediately smack her down and say, no, you are bad, you are evil, you are wicked. No, instead, he said to her, if you knew the gift of God 
and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink. You would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Living water, the gospel message, the forgiveness of sins. He didn't immediately confront her with the law, but with the gospel. And then he brought the law, showing her her sinfulness, but leading her first to that life-giving water, that hope. And look at how it ends. This is verse 39. And I encourage you to read John 4, the whole, the whole uh, account. But many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's witness. Because of that one woman's witness, many others came to Christ and came to salvation. This woman was, not so, was a sinner. This woman was not someone who we would want to pattern our lives after. But God used her. How many of us has God used in the places that we are in our lives? How many times can God use us sinners to share his gospel message? Isn't that the beauty of the gospel? That it isn't just about us, but it is about God going through, working through us to share his love. Salting our, salting our society. Salting our community with his gospel and grace. Through our words. Through our simple words. So often we get wrapped up in waiting for the right moment, the right time. Waiting for that time when it should be perfect for us. When really all we can do is with that, with that tax collector say, Lord, have mercy on me. And time and again He does. Time and again He has mercy on us. Mercy on us, as the poor sinners that we are. And this is another thing that the LWML does. is they are salted for service and with a mission for mercy. Now, it's kind of a long thing, but salted for service with a mission for mercy. When you think about the role of the LWML, they do a lot of wonderful things around the church, don't they? But they also do many wonderful missions around the world. They share the gospel in all sorts of places and all sorts of, with all sorts of people. People who we would not want to approach. People who we would be a little nervous because they're different. They maybe smell, smell different. They look different. But the LWML has gone to those far corners. And what an example that is for us. To go to those far corners of the earth. To go beyond where we're comfortable. Where it's simple. But to all people. Jesus in his own ministry time and again. He lived that mission of mercy, didn't he? He went out to the people who were the outcasts of society. He went out to the people who were undeserving. Even a woman came to Jesus the Syrophoenician woman, she came to Jesus and, and, and she said, Lord, if you would heal my daughter, she would be healed. She, was, she didn't say she's oppressed by the demon. We get that a little later. And this is a text just a few weeks ago, so you know what happened next. Jesus, it seems, almost brushed her off. He almost seemed like he turned his back on her. But then he said, but then he offered her that that olive branch, that, that offer of bread. And, and she came to him and said, even the crumbs of the, from the master's table, the dogs eat. And she realized that the Lord was even inviting her to receive those crumbs as well. And he brought healing to her daughter. The Lord's gift of mercy shows no bounds. The Lord's gift of mercy is not only intended for people we know and people we care about, but it is to stretch to the, the needy, the poor, those who are, who are downtrodden. It is to stretch to the widow and the orphan, as the psalmist say. It is to stretch to the, the, those who are, who are different than us, those who, those who have made choices that we would not have made. Time and again, our Lord did that. Time and again, we see as, as Paul in his own ministry did that. And I'd like to share a quote from our synod president because he had direct opportunity to do that. Our synod president, Matthew Harrison, he was president of the Lutheran World Relief before he was, became our synod president. And he, had, he was literally on the ground just days after the earthquake hit Haiti. He was on the ground in, was, I believe it was Thailand, or was it Thailand or Taiwan, when, when, when the tsunami hit. And he was on the ground there sharing the gospel. And let me share just another account of his own mission opportunity to share Christ. Over the past decade, I've visited dozens and dozens of places in the world and had a recurring experience, like I did, for example, in Amber in India. There I was touring a large and bustling Lutheran hospital compound. Hundreds of people were treated there daily. Babies are born and people are cared for by pastors and deaconesses and doctors. As I rounded a corner on the walk, I came face to face with something profound. A plaque on the hospital building stated, built with the assistance of the funds from the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, 
Every time this occurs, I think of all the women I've met over the years. I think of all those faithfully filled might boxes. I think especially of the, the women now with the Lord. And I am pro- profoundly thankful. Imagine that. You probably walk right past these when you walk out the door. These little might boxes. These little might boxes that we put our change in, maybe our pocket change, maybe we don't even think about because it takes us a little while to fill up. But these little might boxes are changing lives in our country and around the world. These little mite boxes are building hospitals. These little mite boxes are helping those in crisis pregnancy centers. These little mite boxes are helping get the gospel message out in places where we're not. What an amazing gift that God uses all of us to share his word. And that is one of the beautiful things about the LWML, is their focus on communing together, fellowshipping together as people of God, as women of God, that they come together to share the gospel message. It is not something they do on their own. But just like each of us, we work together to share God's love. We work together to share that community, first and foremost in the community of our church, in our community around us, but then beyond sharing that good news because we have been salted for service. We have been prepared for this. It is no accident that we are born at this time, that we are placed into this, in, into this time in the world or this location. It's no accident. God doesn't make mistakes. But he has placed us each here with a specific mission, with a specific job. He has salted each of us with the, for the service that he has prepared for us. Just as each of the members of LWML share the gospel together, share the gospel and share the gospel together, we have been placed to share the gospel and share together with our fellow Christians. How that looks, we don't exactly know at this point because God keeps revealing himself to us. He continues to show himself to us. But we, we are the people of God who have been prepared. Notice I didn't say that we're waiting to be prepared. But we have been prepared. Where you're at in this life, where you're at right now, God put you for a reason. God put you so that you might share his love, that you might share that gospel message. I thank the Lord for the Lutheran women in mission. I thank the Lord for the Christian women in mission. And I thank the Lord that, God, that he has invited each of us to be part of his mission. That he has salted us each for service, that he has prepared each of us. I want to read for you just a, 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 one more passage from Scripture here. And this is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. You are, a, this is, a, well, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And if, if you know the verses right before that is, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And then, but you have been prepared, for, proclaim the ex- excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. I love that last phrase, that last phrase, that marvelous light, to proclaim the marvelous light of our Lord. And that word marvelous, it actually comes from the Greek word thamazo, which it literally means awestruck, amazed, just uh, out of your mind with, when you see that. And I think that's what God's word does. I know that's what God's word does. When we see the God's word living and active in our lives, when we, see, when we proclaim that marvelous light, it is just amazing. It is beyond our comprehension, beyond our comparison. It is beyond what we could ever expect because it is what he is doing. It is what he has prepared us to do. It is what he has sent us to do. It is what he continues to send Lutheran women to do around the world. It is what he has done, what he does as he sends each of us to proclaim the gospel wherever we may be. May God continue to bless our church. May he continue to bless our Lutheran women. May he continue to bless each of us as Christians that we may be salted for service, proclaiming the marvelous light. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious God in heaven, we give thanks to you that you have sent Jesus into the world, that he has defeated sin and he has defeated death and he has defeated the devil, and that he has sent us forth with the promise of salvation a promise to proclaim to the very ends of the earth. Lord, may we be proclaimers of that marvelous light wherever we may be. Lord, use us that we may be salted for service, that we may share your gospel, whether it's at our homes, in our communities, whether it's over the internet or, or just in, in, in the various places you have given us. And Lord, as you prepare us, as you have prepared us in the past, may we go forth now prepared for service to you, as soldiers for you, proclaiming the gospel message against, against the world of sin, that all may know the marvelous light of salvation.
This we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.